The video is Lilo Nishmas or Shmobach Mnchaim Tzvidoi. We're in our last leg of the trip, Singapore. Singapore is a little bit more south, southeast, southwest of um, the Bawa Island, off Indonesia. It's interesting. The history of Singapore about 1800s is when the Baghdadi Jews come to Singapore, and it's never been a very large population. I think now it's close to maybe to 10,000 Jews. There's about two shuls. And um, for that's Singapore. Singapore also itself, interesting, started, I think, in the 3rd third, third century. The name Singapore means, I think, Lion City. And that's the story about Singapore. Now, what's going to be fascinating is a trip back from Singapore, traveling back eastwards towards New York. See, here we crossed the date line, but the opposite of what we did before. On the way here, we lost the day. Here we gain a day. Now, what does it mean we gain a day? We go back a day since we're ahead, of, we're ahead here in, uh, in Indonesia and in Singapore. When we go towards New York, we're gonna we're leaving Thursday, 12.30 a.m., around then. And about a few hours later, about six hours later, we cross the date line. And it becomes day again. Vayer vayvoyke, and Yom Hamishi, again. So we have Thursday twice. Now, as we pointed out halachically, this is the way it works. It doesn't matter really what the date line is. If it's daytime again, it's a new day. And if it means that there's a repeat of Thursday, it's a repeat of Thursday, which means, here's what's so interesting, by the only time you could have in Shachis, Mincha, and Marv within three hours and finish all three. Plus, laning two. And that's what Mitzvah Hashem is going to be doing. So that's the fascinating part of that, this trip, and, fly, and uh, flying from Singapore back to New York. I also wanted to speak about the special, these special weeks, and besides this adventure and the journey of traveling, it is part of the six weeks of Shevivim. And I thought it was actually a very good connection, the Shevivim, with our, exper- our experience in Japan and in Thailand, and really the whole subject of, of Buddhism, which very much focuses on detachment from the physical world. So this week is part of what's called the Shrevevim week. It's a time of cleansing, spiritual cleansing. It's actually introduced by Rav Chaim Vital, the student of uh, of the Arizal. And it's six weeks. Shrevevim stands for Shmois Va'era Bo B'Shalach Yisro Mishpatim. The six weeks of laning. But it also means, Shrevevim means someone, meaning, uh, in fact, when I grew up, a Shavav means someone that's uh, not, a, not the best uh, child, you know, troublemaker. So Klali so called Shuvah Banim Shrevevim. We're supposed to return to the Rabban Shalom. We made mistakes. This is a time of purity, a time where a person could cleanse themselves. There's a lot of Shi'urim that are given on the topic of Tahara Samishpacha, purity. And I thought it would be actually a very important topic to speak. There's a lot to speak about this topic when it comes to Judaism. How ex- exactly does Judaism believe in detachment, doesn't believe in detachment, separating from the physical? I think it's pretty simple. And if you look in Mesir Shasharim, it explains quite clearly. Kedusha is really taking anything in this world and making sure that we're using it in a positive way. So if you look at the Mesir he has a whole discussion about should a person separate from the physical, should we not separate from the physical? Um, I think sometimes we're convinced or, or maybe the more Hasidic approach is that no, we're supposed to enjoy this world and we spoke about quite often about this topic but in, in truth I think everyone will understand and I think it's much more clear when we explain yes, Hashem gave us this beautiful world and we're supposed to appreciate it and like we've been doing in this trip but to elevate it to look where the Kedusha Kedusha means to be able to see Hashem in every part of it including the physical meaning, physical food, etc. And therefore, there is a custom. There's actually three different customs. There's a custom to fast 40 days starting already past Sunday. That's one difficult custom to fast 40 days straight, meaning at needing at night. Then there's another custom just to fast once a week. Here it splits between Thursdays or Fridays. Imagine, so if you're traveling on this uh, trip, you'd have to fast twice because double Thursday. And then those that fast Friday, because Friday is connected to side, one of the uh, six uh, spheres, the spheres of, uh, of the manifestation of Hashem in this world. Yisoyed is a foundation. There is another beautiful custom, which I saw the Baba Rabbi actually says that today it's, very, it's quite hard to fast. So fasting is a very powerful tool of tshuva. And those that could do it, beautiful, a Thursday or a Friday. However, there's another type of fast, two types. One is what's called Tainus Arrived, which means to separate a little bit and eat really just what you need. One day, Thursday or Friday, choose that day and eat only what you really need in Avoidness Hashem. That's one. 
Number two, tiny dibu. Deciding that we're going to use our speech in the right way. And not and choose one day, Thursday or Friday, when we're not speaking. Or if we need to speak, it's only going to be something that's necessary. What's interesting is it fits beautiful with Shabbos Kodesh because the Arizal says that what was the main goddess of Mitzrayim? It was goddess Adipo, the exile of speech. So, what to speak about that? Have an amazing day. Hatzacha.